Hey everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome to my channel. And today we are going to be talking about getting a job in this current market as uh, a software engineer or a software engineering adjacent job. Um, so a little bit about me, if you're new to this channel, I graduated from WGU back in February of this year and I have been on the job hunt since. Um, I have obtained an internship um, back in May and I've been there still searching for a job um, since I am looking for a full-time opportunity. I'm currently a master's student at uh, Georgia Tech pursuing my master's in computer science. Um, and I want to make this video to kind of just uh, share my experience and then hopefully um, assist or um, kind of give you guys, my viewers, uh, a little bit um, more insight into um, getting a job, especially if you're currently in your degree program um, or you have just graduated and you're in a similar situation to me. So uh, I made a similar video back in spring um, it, where I mentioned that my uh, job search efforts were, uh, were not fruitful. Um, however, after getting my internship, I started getting a lot more interviews and uh, I've been in I've been in a lot of interviews more than more than 10 probably closer to 20 interviews at this point with different companies um, and recently I've made some ground right I've uh, gotten several offers from different companies um, and I'm continuing to interview just to see what the best option would be for me moving forward um, however um, I want to uh, stress the importance of getting experience right and that's that's whether or not you're currently in your degree program if you're in your degree program it's going to put you at a huge advantage to get experience prior to graduating so say you're in um, WGU like me or another online degree program um, and you still are a year out from graduating uh, right now companies are hiring for summer of 2024 internships I'm not particularly applying to those uh, positions just because um, I'm looking for an earlier start date. However, um, companies, especially the big ones, like to hire really far out in advance. So um, think like TikTok, um, Meta, Roblox, um, all the big, all the big employers. They're hiring right now, and uh, if if you can try to get at least uh, an invitation to the code assessment, I would submit your application, right? If your resume gets past the initial screening, you're going to be sent a code assessment for most of those positions. And it's um, a series of leak code style problems. So make sure you're down on your data structures and algorithms. Um, and if you pass those, then they'll move you on to like the initial, uh, basically screening round where I, I believe it's it's mostly just behavioral um, questions and background questions. Um, but yeah, if if you're looking to uh, if you're still in your degree program, it's essential that you try to get internship experience because um, that is what's going to help you stand out um, after you graduate um, and it'll definitely save you a lot of time. Um, if you've already graduated, uh, then I still suggest that you prioritize getting experience. Uh, whether it's paid or unpaid. If you're unable to get an internship um, or you're not getting any interviews to the paid internships that you're applying to, then I would heavily suggest applying for an unpaid internship. And the reason I say this, yes, I know that having an unpaid internship is not preferable because you're not getting paid and you're doing work. However, it's the experience that's the most important, right? Um, and in the long run, it's going to be worth it when you're making a lot of money as a software engineer or a similar job, right? If you do a little bit of unpaid work to help you get the experience, then that's how you're going to stand out. And and really, in my in my opinion, um, in this job market, which is so competitive right now due to all the layoffs and the saturation and just the current uh, situation of our of our economy. Um, it's really hard to get a job as a software engineer. So you need something to stand out. And if you don't have experience, then you're not gonna stand out. So you need to uh, figure out that part of your situation as honestly as, as soon as you can. Um, and so if you're 
not looking for an internship and you're looking for a full-time opportunity, say you already have a little bit of internship experience or you're looking for maybe a, uh, a training program or something um, with one of the consulting companies that kind of just kickstart you into your career. So um, like, I, like I mentioned, right? If you don't have internship experience and you're looking for a full-time entry-level job, it's going to be hard to stand out. It's going to be hard to get a job. And that's what I was kind of doing uh, right after I graduated. I was looking just for full-time opportunities. I wasn't looking for internships um, because I hadn't yet um, started my master's program. And I just, I wanted to get a full-time job. Well, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. So if you're dead set on getting a full-time job after graduating with your degree, you're probably going to have to make some sacrifices in terms of pay or uh, quality of experience that you get. Um, so, you know, there are programs like Reviture or Dev10, and those are not hard to get accepted into and start. Um, however, I would heavily suggest against doing something like that. Um, because you don't want to be bound to a contract um, where you have to like pay if you want to get out of it. That's just that just sounds more like indentured servitude, and it's probably not the reason that you went and you got your degree. But you know, different different preferences for everyone, right? Um, I would suggest trying to apply to uh, Wiley Edge if that's the case for you, um, because Wiley Edge is basically. It, it's kind of it's similar to uh, Reviture or Dev10 in the fact that they train you and then they place you with a client. Um, however, their training program doesn't cost money. They pay you for your training. Um, you're not like bound to a contract. To, like well, you do have a contract when you're placed with a company, but you can leave any time. You're not like you you want to have to pay money to leave the contract. So it's kind of like a legitimate alternative to doing something. Um, similar to Reviture or something, if you're just looking to get your foot in the door and start and you don't care about having to relocate or low pay, then yeah, that's potentially a good option for you. And I know that I've, I've seen some job postings, they have, they have cohorts um, coming up soon. So that's definitely something that you could consider if you're looking for a full-time job and you don't have experience. If you do have experience and you are looking for a full-time job, I would suggest um, trying to look for new grad opportunities or entry level um, in look for those keywords right new grad program um, or entry level or software engineer one um, or whatever it is that you're looking for um, if just in my experience if you're looking for something that says junior engineer then uh, those those jobs usually require like one to three years of experience because junior engineer could be could mean someone who's already worked as a junior engineer but hasn't been um, hasn't leveled up to a mid-level position. So they, like, in my experience, most of the junior level positions still require, like, experience working as a full-time engineer. So you will probably have better luck if you apply to specifically entry-level or new grad positions. And then um, also, I want to just mention, because I know that it's it's popular, right, to prepare for, uh, like, leak code problems for interviews, right? And that, and I still agree that that is important. You know, I have my own leak code series where I do leak code tutorials in Java, and that's been incredibly useful for me applying to jobs and making it through interview rounds. Um, and it's definitely good practice for learning how to code better and understanding data structures more in depth. It's it's a good thing, and I 100% encourage it. However, I don't think that it should be your number one priority, or you should be spending all of your job interview prep time uh, working on. Uh, uh, DSA white whiteboard problems um, because I would say about half half of the t tech companies hiring for software engineer positions don't even uh, don't even ask those questions don't even ask the whiteboard questions in interviews um, they'll either ask about your project experience I haven't done I've heard of it where they ask you to like write code in front of them or uh, do like a take home project I've heard of that I haven't done it before I don't think that's as popular but something that is really popular that I've been asked a lot is just theoretical questions about my education, um, like in uh, data structures and algorithms and object oriented programming, right? So uh, to kind of get you an idea, uh, basically they'll ask, uh, tell me more about the four uh, pillars of object oriented programming. Tell me what is uh, polymorphism or what's inheritance and give me an example. Um, They'll ask you differences between uh, 
statically typed and dynamically typed languages. Um, or they'll ask you, what's a hash map? Uh, what's its pros and cons? Um, what's time complexity? You know, things like that. Those are all um, questions that you might be asked and you should be prepared to answer those. Um, and hopefully you'll have a um, solid foundation of those concepts from your education and whatever computer science program that you uh, that you underwent. If not, I would heavily suggest uh, doing some more research and kind of uh, covering those topics more in depth to help you better prepare for those types of interviews um, because they'll more than likely come up. So um, yeah, right now is a really exciting time. Uh, and if you're looking for an internship, it's don't waste any don't waste any time. Start applying, mass applying. Uh, make sure to submit as you know as many applications as you can. Uh, there's tons of lists out there on on GitHub about companies that are hiring. Uh, literally, just do a quick Google search, and uh, yeah, try to get experience. That should be your number one priority if you're going to wanting to get a uh, if you're wanting to have a career in software engineering. Um, and you're looking to you know, start that career, then getting experience, whether it's unpaid or paid, um, should be your number one priority. And yeah, I wish you all the best. And if this was helpful for you, please leave a, a like and subscribe for more related content. Um, and if you have any suggestions or ideas for more videos or something you know, that you wanna see, um, please go ahead and leave that in the comments. And yeah, I look forward to um, talking with you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.